Do you ever wish you could go back in time on your stream? Well, I'm Finite Singularity, and today we are going to build an old-timey retro effect for OBS that'll bring your viewers back to those simpler days and amaze them in the process. In order to build this effect, we will need a few plugins. We'll start with the Move plugin for all of our animation, Source Clone, Retro Effects for that retro TV look. We'll use the Noise plugin combined with Advanced Masks to give ourselves a really nice reveal for our effect. And finally, we'll use Stroke Glow Shadow to take that reveal to the next level. Now, all of the links to these plugins will be in the description below. And once you have them all installed, let's go and jump on into OBS and build our effect. We're going to start with a pretty basic OBS setup here. I've got an output talking scene. I have a scene component that just contains my chroma key face cam. And then I've got a utility scene which contains an image that we'll use here in a little bit. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is make a face cam effects scene. So let's start with that. We will call this scene component and we'll call it face cam effects. And in this scene, we are going to make two source clones. Uh, they're both going to be clones of our face cam camera scene. So we will just call this clone and we'll call this first one face cam normal. Uh, this will be a source clone. The source that we are going to clone will be our face cam camera. Uh, we'll uncheck audio here because we're not using our camera for the audio and we will click OK. Uh, we'll then duplicate this. So let's copy and paste source duplicate. Uh, we're going to call our duplicate here face cam old timey. So this is where we're going to apply that old time effect. Now to create the visual effect, we are going to add some filters to our old timey face cam clone. So go ahead and click on this source, then click filters. The first thing that we're going to do is an upscale and a downscale. I learned this trick from Epos Vox. It just makes this old TV effect look that much more authentic. So start by selecting a scaling aspect ratio. We'll call this filter downscale. And under your resolution, select a small resolution. I'm going to go with 640 by 360, which works well for 1080p sources. Uh, once you select your resolution, go ahead and right click on downscale, duplicate it, and we will call this upscale, where we're going to upscale the video back to what our original canvas resolution was. Uh, so what this does, you'll see that we lose some of the quality. It becomes a little bit more blurry, uh, but this is going to really sell the effect when we put our retro effects filters between our downscale and our, our upscale. So speaking of that, let's start to do the actual old time TV effect. Uh, go ahead and add a new filter. We will select retro effects. Call this first one NTSC. Uh, NTSC was an old broadcast system way, way back in the day. Uh, it was a kind of TV broadcast that I grew up with. Uh, and this filter does an authentic replication of an old NTSC broadcast. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and have a tuning offset of 1.6. Uh, we'll go ahead and set our noise to 4%. Our band size will be 11 and our band strength we will set to 50%. There we go, 50%. Uh, we'll scroll down here. We'll skip the chroma settings because we're going to convert this to black and white so those color bleeds won't really make a difference. And just take your saturation and bring it down to zero. And you can see we already have a very nice looking sort of old black and white TV look, but let's push it up a bit to sell the effect even more. Uh, so go ahead and we're going to add another filter here. Again, it will be retro effects. 
and call this one scan lines. And this is gonna give it that old TV scan line look. So place the scan line filter after your NTSC filter, but before upscale, select scan lines for your filter type. We'll do a sine wave scan line. We will set our period to five pixels. We'll set our speed to 30 pixels per second. And finally, we will set our intensity to 30%. And there we go. We now have a very nice looking old TV effect with our scan lines. However, old TV lenses, the glass on the front would many times bend the light. So you would see some color fringing around edges. And to, to simulate this, we can add one more filter here. It will also be retro effects, and we will call this CA for chromatic aberration. Uh, the filter we wanna select is the chromatic aberration filter, and we're gonna make this kind of subtle. We're gonna add two and a half pixels to the red offset, and we are going to subtract two and a half pixels from the blue offset. This is just gonna add this nice little color fringing that you would see on a lot of old TVs. And now we've got a very convincing old timey TV effect. The next thing we need to do is set up a mask. Now we need to make a mask where we can show or hide our old timey effect. Uh, we'll do this by creating a new scene. So we will call this scene component and I will call the scene component a mask scene. I will go ahead and add a new color source. It can be any color you want it to be. Uh, you want it to fill your entire canvas. So set the width and height to your canvas size. And the idea is we are going to use this as we move this source around to mask our source. Uh, we'll go ahead and right click on the actual scene and we're going to add this move filter to the scene. Uh, go ahead and add a move source filter. This allows you to animate moving a source within a scene. We'll call this one mask on. Uh, it's the color source that we want to move. We'll set a custom duration here of a second. We'll set no easing and just click get transform because we've got the color source filling our scene right now. Uh, then what we wanna do is right click this and duplicate our mask on, call it mask off and take your color source here and slide it down to the bottom and off the bottom of the canvas and go ahead and click get transform again. You should see a value come in here with the transform. And now if we click mask on, you see that the source slides up, mask off, the source slides down. So let's go ahead with this simple mask. We'll go back to our face cam effects and we will right click on our face cam old timey. We'll click filters and now we want to add this mask. Uh, so go ahead and select the advanced mask filter. We'll call this mask. It will be an alpha mask, it will be a source mask, and the source we want to select is that scene component that we just set up. So scene component mask, uh, everything else can stay the same. Uh, so now if we close this down, we'll switch back to mask here, click filters to bring our mask on and our mask off up, and go back to our face cam effect. You can see if I go to mask off here, it takes the mask away, and if I select mask on, it applies the mask back. But that hard edge isn't exactly, you know, a fancy. You know, we'd like something a little bit more interesting. Uh, to do this, we are going to go back to our mask scene, and let's scroll our color source down to the middle so that we can see the changes we're gonna apply here. Uh, right click on your, again, on your scene component, um, under your mask on and mask off, add a new, and this time you're going to add a noise displacement filter. And this is gonna allow us to roughen the edges. So we'll just call this rough edges. And what we will do here from the defaults, we will set our scale X to one pixel. 
we'll set our scale Y to something very large. And now you're starting to see this noise come in. We're gonna make a static-like noise. So go ahead here and select linear. Uh, we will bring our, if you scroll down a bit here, we're gonna bring our noise complexity down to one. Our base pixel width, we will set to one pixel. And our base pixel height, we will set to 128 pixels. And it's gonna give you this uh, nice sort of static look here. And then you can start to mess around with, uh, with some of the other properties to get exactly what you want. Uh, so I'm gonna go back up here. I'm gonna set my scale Y actually to 64 pixels. I think that's gonna work a little bit better. Um, and you know, let's uh, let's try linear for our noise type. So this has that nice like static look to it, right? Uh, so scroll down, everything's looking good there. I'm gonna take my evolution speed and crank this up to like 2000. So it's this very fast looking, uh, looking line. And if we go back and we click back on our face cam effects, you can start to see that we have this rough line that follows our face cam now. Uh, we wanna highlight that line a little bit. To highlight that line, in your face cam effects scene, add a new stroke. Um, this stroke, uh, we can just call stroke or we can call it edge. And the source you're gonna use for this will be that same scene component mask. You'll uncheck infill zero offset, and we'll go ahead and instead of a fill type of color, we'll use a fill type of source. And in my utility scene here, I have this radio great, uh, rainbow gradient, which the idea behind it is it's gonna look like it's pulling the color out of the video. So for your source, select that image. So I called it rainbow gradient. And here you can see we have this yellow line going right across. Uh, however, we don't want this going all the way across our frame. Uh, so we also have to go ahead, we'll save these changes, and we're going to apply some filters to Edge. So go ahead with your filters uh, and add an advanced mask, and we will call this face cam mask. And what we want is for this line not to leave our subject. Uh, so what we can use for this is a source mask, the source that we will select will be our face cam. So let's take a look here. We have got our face cam normal and face cam old timey, as well as our face cam camera. I'm gonna select our face cam camera because that's never going to change. And here you see now this static only shows over our subject. Uh, to take this up a notch, we can also add a glow to our noise here. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK for glow. And oh, let me undo that. Uh, then what we'll do here, I'm gonna select dual Kawase instead of uh, triangular. I'm gonna give it a nice large size. So let's crank that up a little bit. And then my fill type, I'm gonna do a source and we're gonna select that same rainbow gradient source. So this is giving this nice glow to our edge. Uh, so now what we have with our mask, if I right click here and open filters, and I go back to our face cam effects, uh, when I turn the mask off, you can see I'm normal, and when I turn it on, it moves up with that sort of colored edge to kind of give that effect like we're getting the color sucked out and being replaced with that black and white. Uh, the last thing we want to do here for our filters is go ahead and on our face cam effects here, we will add a filter that will control whether we are old tiny or not. So click the plus button. We're gonna do a move action filter here uh, and I will call it old timey. And you'll be able to bind this filter to like a button on your stream deck or you can bind this filter to some kind of a redemption from your chat. Uh, our start action is going to be a filter enable. The source that we will enable a filter on will be our mask, and the filter we will enable will be mask on. Then under duration, we're going to select infinite duration, 
And finally, under our end action, we'll do the same. We'll enable a filter on our, uh, let's see, on our mask source or mask scene. And that filter will be mask off. And now what happens when we hit the little eyeball here next to old timey? Now we are old timey. And then when we turn our filter off, it goes away. From here, the sky's the limit. You can go ahead and add, like I have a, uh, a filter effect to your microphone to make it sound like you are from long, long ago. Uh, you can integrate this with your stream deck. You can integrate it with channel point redemptions. There is just so much that you can do with it. Now, the last thing we need to do is place our face cam effect scene wherever we might want to show this effect. Uh, I'll use my talking output scene here as an example. So currently we just have our face cam camera here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this and we will go and add a new scene to this scene. So we'll be nesting and we will select our face cam effects. So now we have got our face cam effects and we can now toggle off and on our effect. Um, again, this can be wired up to your stream deck or to something like your channel point redemptions through something like StreamerBot or Atom, and it just works. Uh, the great part about doing things this way is you can actually create other effects and start to place them all in this face cam effects scene and then place that wherever you want throughout your OBS setup. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you build something amazing with it. Please let me know in the comments what you do end up building. And if you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.